Okay, so we're here in the orchard, and for this segment, uh, for this video, we're going to talk about calcium strategies. Now, we're talking about what I often refer to as the master mineral. We're talking about a mineral that people don't sometimes understand the importance of. I mean, the very first thing that we're looking at in a world of increasing climate change pressure is how can we build resilience? And part of that resilience story is to build cell strength, cell wall strength, and understand that the cell wall is made equally with calcium and silica. And so you say, well, there's plenty of calcium in most soils, but there's not when you start testing the plant. So we do leaf tests all over the world. We're in 55 countries. We've got teams of agronomists working in multiple countries. And what I can tell you is that the vast majority of tissue tests need extra calcium. Calcium is what we call one of the big four, the four minerals most linked to photosynthesis that we want to keep at luxury levels on a leaf test. If it's 0.4 to 0.6, the ideal range, we want 0.6 for calcium. Calcium, phosphorus, magnesium, and boron, surprisingly boron, not nitrogen or potassium, but calcium, magnesium, phosphorus, and boron are the big four that we maximize. We keep at luxury levels, the top end of the acceptable range on a leaf test, and we see very, very good results when that happens. But calcium is certainly a huge player. As directly, it's often referred to as the trucker of all minerals. It's directly linked to the uptake of seven other minerals. So it's the first thing you normally look at on your soil test. And so you might, have you do your soil test and understand the need for you know about two-thirds of the clay collar to be filled with calcium at around 68 percent of the clay filled with calcium in this in this balancing strategy and you look at the calmag ratio and you might have corrected all of those but your tissue test comes back lacking calcium and that happens all the time and why is that it's because calcium is kind of even though it's a major mineral in the soil it's impacted very seriously by a bunch of other things we do now all the other two major cations in fact three of them sodium magnesium and potassium all will up affect the uptake you've got high magnesium it affects calcium uptake if you've overdone potassium which is quite common uh, that will affect in fact has more effect sometimes than what magnesium does in terms of reducing calcium uptake uh, if you've overdone boron uh, one of the side effects is that it affects calcium uptake. And then, then there's the fact that calcium is the most sluggish. Minerals vary in their mobility. And NPK and the two Ms, uh, molybdenum and, and, and uh, magnesium, are the, so M NPK, molybdenum and magnesium are the five really mobile minerals. Rush into the plant, rush around the plant quite rapidly. And then we vary in terms of our sluggishness and the slug of all minerals, without exception, is calcium. It's really, really slow to move into the plant, it's slow to move around the plant. And that's why we find that in almost all crops, there's very rare exceptions, most crops will benefit from a foliar where you've bypassed all of that interplay and impact and the fact that it's so sluggish. We've bypassed that story and we just go with the direct route straight into the plant 12 times more efficiently. And we find really there's no crop that doesn't benefit. This crop, the apple crop behind us, hugely calcium hungry at this stage when it's just starting to size the fruit uh, and even before that. And so we'll come in weekly with a calcium foliar spray to provide the amount that's required. So when we talk about what sorts of things can improve calcium availability other than mineral balance, there's a biological link. And the big story in that link is the percentage of fungi, the, the fungi to bacteria ratio, one of the most important ratios in your farming history is, you know, we want that one-to-one -one ratio. And in many instances, we don't achieve that. Now, one thing in this field that's helping us achieve that uh, is this good sward of clover. Now, the reason that we've left the clover uncut is because we just brought in, as part of our IP, IPM, we just brought a, a batch of little trichogramma wasps that will sting the codling larva, uh, codling, codling moth larva, and we want to give them some pollen. So it's mainly clover, but we just let it grow, uh, particularly while the trichogramma are active, which is a few weeks after you put them out. So that's the reason that we see all this clover. But when we talk about clover or a legume full stop, we're talking about a functional legume. We're talking about a legume that has nodules and those nodules must have that red colour inside, a, a substance called a pigment called leg hemoglobin. And only then do they become a food source and a stimulant for fungi who tend to gather around the legume's roots. There'll be much more, uh, much more fungi gathered around the functioning legume than the walls with the grass next door to it. So we're trying to encourage uh, the fungi that make calcium available, that make calcium more available. And so 
we need to have those ligands working for us as the model. Now, there are instances in recognition of that fungal link to calcium uptake where people will put lime with a fungal dominated compost. There's actually a New Zealand company that makes that product uh, and they'll get a wonderful response in that context. A lot of people don't realize the yield building potential of calcium. And I'll tell you a little story because it's quite an important one. You never stop learning in this business. I had uh, a North Queensland a grower of pawpaws, which the Americans call papayas, a pawpaws and passion fruit. And he'd done my course previously, the five day course, and he came back for a second dose, which many, many people do. It's hugely intensive course. And the second time around, you learn more because you've got prior learning from the first course and, and putting some of those principles into practice. And he did exactly that. And he came up during the break and the, on the first day and said, look, I need to share with you. I picked up this idea from you and I've found out how to make it work and it has been a tremendous success story. Now the idea that he picked up was the concept I mentioned, you know, that George Washington was often referred to as the father of American agriculture. And part of that name came from the fact that he recognized that these wonderful mineralized soils, often from glacial origin, lacked one thing, they lacked calcium. And he realized that limestone, when you try and correct that calcium, is a, quite a slow process. It can be two years of slow release from the limestone. There's only five kilograms of the 400 kilograms in a ton of lime that's actually plant available. And he said, what happens when you burn burn lime. Well, when you burn lime and create calcium oxide and then with some water on it, calcium hydroxide, builder's lime, you've suddenly increased 30 fold. You've gone from five kilograms to 150 kilograms of immediately plant available calcium. Now, my reason for not doing anything about that understanding in terms of utilizing it is that it burns. It's very, very hot. Uh, and, you know, you can mark out a cricket pitch for those of you who know what cricket is, which is probably not the Americans, um, but, but you mark out a cricket pitch with with, with burnt lime where you used to. Uh, and so I've not actually experimented. Well, he did. He said, okay, where's the rate at which it doesn't burn and where it's very productive? And he found that if you put 10 kilos, so understand this, it's gonna be about 10 pounds per acre for the Americans, but 10 kilos per hectare of, of builder's lime, which is $10 a bag for 20 kilos. So we're talking $5 worth of builder's lime or calcium hydroxide into a thousand litre shuttle or a tote as the Americans call it, with a firefighter, this is his model, a firefighter that's circulating it because it'll drop out of suspension if you don't keep it in circulation. And also of course has a hose on it with a spray unit on the end of the hose. Uh, and then you add the important thing that you always add with calcium if it's possible. And that important thing is boron because calcium, the trucker of all minerals and boron, the steering wheel. So we want to always have boron with calcium. They work together synergistically. A lot of what calcium does, it doesn't do without boron. And so in this instance, he said, okay, I'm going to put some boron in there. So he uses a kilo of sol sodium borate, solubor. So get, get that as 10 liters and 1,000 liters, 10 kilos, sorry, and 1,000 liters of calcium hydroxide, one kilo of boron, and then he puts some humic acid to create a stable boron humate and to magnify and buffer because humic acid is a very good carbon buffer, uh, buffer any potential burn. So he's got a thousand liters and it's a thousand liters per hectare. So he sprays it all over the roots, all over the, all, sorry, all over the leaves, all over the stem and around the base of the roots. And a thousand liters will allow you to do that. And, that, and he does that once a month. Well, the story and the benefits from that really shook the room when we shared it in the class. Uh, he's gone and he's grown pawpaws for a lot of years from an average pack out of 12 to 14 per box down to six per box. I mean, that's phenomenal. That's more than double the pawpaw size, the papaya size, just with calcium. And of course the boron, and of course calcium is about cell division. And it's, it's people don't realize the yield link to calcium if you look after it in an available form like that. But more importantly, or as importantly, you know, you can't grow pawpaws in the subtropic without getting that black spot that starts on the lower leaves and moves its way up. And we can manage it, but if you miss a week and you've got to do it weekly with things like trichoderma and bacillus subtilis and so forth, and you alternate it with a couple of other things, um, you can manage it, but you miss a week because you're away or whatever, and it gets in, it's really hard to pull back. So it's quite difficult. And in my region, they don't grow pawpaws much at all anymore because of that disease. Zero disease, once a month, 
with that particular, and that's just delivering that calcium, and that's a lot of calcium, 40% calcium, 10 liters, it's a lot, it's like you know, 20 or 30, it's like 40 or 50 liters of collated calcium that you put out there in terms of the calcium that's delivered, it's a really big calcium hit, but that effective. And then, of course, we've got problems with the passion fruit industry that's been beset with fusarium up in North Queensland this season, this last year has been a wet season, zero fusarium. So it's a, it's a really, it's worth investigating. So I immediately put together, I had an old ute and a thousand litre shuttle with an old firefighter and we did it not on this farm where I'd show it to you here, but on the other farm and really, really, a, a really noticeable and impressive response. So I think it's a really good way to address calcium. We'll talk about some of the other tools for addressing calcium. Now, one of these, I've got a forklift in the background there. Um, we'll start from we'll start from this end. So we're going to talk about collated calcium. So we're using amino acids to collate calcium here, and we've added some boron. So it's a product called Caltech, and you might do that yourself with a blend of, of calcium nitrate, amino acids, and boron. Um, this is micronized. So this is this whole story of creating this tiny, tiny, minuscule particle size that increases the plant available dramatically, plant availability dramatically. And so we've taken uh, lime, and we've actually got more than one kilo into a litre. We've got 1.1 kilos, so if this little container is really, really heavy, we can't put it in a thousand litre shuttle because it weighs one and a half tonnes and you can't lift it with some of the forklifts, so we only can use like 800 litres in, in a shuttle, and we have 15 litre piles rather than 20 litre piles of it, but 44% calcium of just calcium, there's no nitrates, there's no chloride or whatever, if you want just calcium, um, it's, it's really effective fertigating it uh, and you can fully spray it. And you won't get all of that go through, but certainly a percentage of it and it's a good response. So typically we would, we would uh, fertigate this, uh, this Lime Life product as a calcium source. Now, if you needed phosphate as well, it's interesting because guano, when you micronize it and take it back to that tiny little minuscule five microns, much more surface area, much more availability for organisms to come in and make that available very quickly. Um, basically, 30%, 32% of some of the guano is calcium. So it's almost as much as lime. So you're getting that calcium hit, but you're also getting 12 to 14% phosphorus and you're getting over 20% silica in that available form and some really good trace minerals that are found in guano. So micronized guano. And there's a second thing with that particular product, you can't mix calcium and phosphate. It's well known that you get the big bang when you can mix them. And some people will have two separate tanks so that they can get that big hit because they're both so important for that most important process, photosynthesis. So they try and have calcium and phosphate coming into the plant at the same time. But you, if you mix them together in a tank, in one tank, of course, they fall out, they form calcium phosphate and become insoluble. Well, this is not ionic. This is so fine that it's available almost instantly, but calcium and phosphate are, are together and people get very excited about the results they see when they get that double hit of calcium, of the two big photosynthesizer drivers with calcium and phosphate in one product. So that's called FosLife. Now, this is a relatively new thing, and this is a recognition of a relationship between three minerals. And some say that this trio may be as important as the other big trio, which of course is N, P, and K. Uh, I know people like the biodynamic, the famous biodynamic master Hugh Lovell used to talk about calcium, boron, and silica as the foundation of everything. Uh, and so we said, okay, they work really well together. Why uh, is silica important for calcium uptake, for example? What's the relationship there? Well, silica builds the pathways, phloem and xylem, into the plant. So you've got the slug that suddenly can roar in on a superhighway that you built with silica. It's exaggerating a little bit. It's the story of what's happening. So silica increases calcium uptake. And then we say, what's boron got to do? Well, calcium and boron, just to understand them structurally from a protective perspective, there's a substance called calcium pectate, which is like an armor-like layer to resist insects and disease. It's made from calcium and boron, equally important in that equation. So, so, so we put the three together. We put the foundation minerals together, and it's called silical B, B for boron, of course, and that's relatively new, and it's been very, very popular. Now, the last of them is quite an interesting story. The second to last, we'll just tell this one. Now, this one you can make yourself. Uh, basically, this is 
really simple if you're not certified organic and you don't and you haven't got too much nitrates it's just using calcium nitrate uh, and, and it's not much you're using two to three kilos per hectare or two to three pounds per acre and you put some fulvic acid with it and you create a calcium folate now we've done a little more than that with this calcium folate that's got a lot of kelp in it as well so kelp and fulvic acid and like 23 percent in that liquid so it's a fertilizer in its own right without the calcium uh, but then it's very, very popular amongst vegetable growers. And like I said, you can do it yourself. You're just going to take calcium nitrate and some fulvic acid and you've created your own simple calcium fulvate, which is a very effective way to get calcium into the plant. Very, I mean, calcium nitrate's like a, a here, it's about 80 cents a kilo. You're using a couple of kilos and maybe a couple of dollars with the fulvic acid. You, it's, it's $5 or $6 a hectare to spray that and everything. I mean, pasture, every vegetable crop, every broad acre crop, every orchard crop will benefit from that. You might use a little more when you've got this much organic matter in the orchard scenario. So just the final one in terms of our calcium tools is an interesting one because we have a complete unique, it's not a collation system, it's a mineral delivery system that a, a South African professor discovered. Uh, and basically it involves, I'll explain it because it's quite unusual. Basically you've got the scenario where you, you have a biochemical that creates a nano cluster of whatever mineral you've, say we're gonna spray some zinc. Uh, so we so we so we fully spray the zinc with the shuttle collating agent or the shuttle mineral delivery uh, agent, uh, and what happens effectively is that you create this nanocluster of zinc molecules, and you have this biochemical called a shuttle ligand that's attracted with its charge to that little holding pen of zinc, grabs the zinc molecule, and now it's attracted to the negatively charged leaf surface, and so it bobs on the leaf surface, and it can be leaf or it can be stem, it can be the top of the leaf, which is not usually an entry point, and it just bobs with this with this uh, this pheno the phenomenon of physics called thermal vibration, where it's just and it, because everything's vibrating, and you've got this magnetic charge that keeps it bobbing on when a vibration in a tiny opening coincides with the bob it pops it in now it's changed its charge it goes back to the holding pin comes back pop pop bob 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 pop goes back grabs another uh, and it's a whole different delivery system that is super efficient but there was a freakish thing that we discovered in some spanish basically a company who was involved in pears and apples in Spain said all right we want to test this new delivery system against Stop It which is the main calcium product in that industry and not only did they find that it actually it actually outperformed uh, every other calcium but they found this weird side effect and we couldn't explain it but they, I, thought, I was, thought they're not going to be too happy about this but they were delighted what they found was that it retards growth it actually stops the, the, the length between the internodes uh, and then they did a whole year of trials against the two main growth retarders that you can buy and it outperformed them so we don't even know how I mean I came up with a formula and put several things in there and we don't know why it's doing it. It's only a calcium shuttle. None of the other shuttles do it, but it restricts growth. You can use it even on grass, on golf greens to pull the growth down. You can use it uh, to, put, to reduce growth uh, in any crop, basically. So you could use it to reduce pruning requirements in a calcium scenario. So that's calcium, very well delivered calcium. But if you want, you can have a second. Now, you don't do that on a vegetative crop. If you want something with a, something with a lot of leaf, you're not going to try and pull it back in size. There's no gain in that. So it's, it's horses for courses, but quite an unusual scenario. So that's calcium shuttle. So that's kind of the story on calcium, a few ideas. Um, and I think it pretty much wraps up this little segment. Thanks for, thanks for watching.